امين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد واله وصحبه وسلم ان شاء الله تعالى this morning we're going to take some benefit from the tafsir of Sheikh Al-Allama Abdul Rahman bin Nasser Al-Sa'di rahimahullah some of you may not be aware of this scholar Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Nasser Al-Sa'di is considered one of the greatest scholars of our time and he produced a lot of fruits and benefits rahimahullah and uh, Sheikh rahimahullah is from an area called Al Qasim it's in Saudi Arabia and uh, specifically in Unayza. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he refused to become a judge because the, the, in Saudi Arabia, the senior scholars, they all go through the, the court system. They become judges to benefit the people. But the Shaykh refused to become a judge. He broke the, tra the tradition in that particular area where he is because he wanted to benefit the people. <clears throat> so he preferred to be a teacher rather than being a judge. So by doing that, uh, he produced a lot of benefit in terms of students that carried that knowledge after him and also the books that he left behind, like this one, Tafsir al-Quran, Sheikh Saidi rahimahullah. And from his students, uh, the most prominent one, those are, who are most distinguished, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin, Rahimahullah, is well known, and Sheikh uh, Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz al Aqil, Rahimahullah, and Sheikh Abdullah bin Sam, Abdullah bin Sam, Rahimahullah, is one of his students as well. And uh, the Sheikh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he spent all his life teaching the people until he passed away, rahimahullah. And then Sheikh Al-Allama uh, al he took his place. He took his place in the Grand Mosque of Unayza. Yeah. So this is just a brief um, description about Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Nasr al-Sa'di, rahimahullah. Inshallah, we're going to continue from where we left off. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنْدَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْدِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَى أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ as for the disbelievers, it is the same whether you warn them or not. They will not believe. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearings and on their eyes is a covering. Theirs will be a great punishment. The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Allah informs that those who have assumed the behavior of disbelief meaning they have adopted the characteristic of the disbelievers, have gone so deep in their disbelief that it has become second nature to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. A'udhu billah min dhalik. No one can change them. And no amount of sermonizing can remove them from this behavior. So even if you sermon them, like sermonize them, means that you give them exhortation after exhortation, it does not benefit them. You believe that? It's that deep that the, the, the exhortations, they hear uh, the hellfire, the punishment of the hellfire, and all this, but they don't, get, they don't benefit from the Quran and they don't benefit from the exhort exhortation. As the Sheikh mentioned here, he said, and no amount of sermonizing can remove them from this behavior, subhanAllah. Since they became rigid and immovable in their disbelief, it is all the same whether you, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, edify them or not, they will never accept faith. 
The reality of this belief is denying the teachings in whole or in part which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought. Thus, any amount of preaching will not give any benefit to the, to the disbelievers. Rather, it establishes a conclusive argument against them. Subhanallah. So now, the Quran has become a proof against them. Because the Quran is either a proof for you or against you. This verse, in fact, ends all hope that the Prophet ﷺ had for them to accept faith. And he is told not to be saddened, not to be saddened or depressed regarding the rejection of it. Because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he was saddened by that. Because he, uh, he wanted them to become you know, believers. But al hidayah of success is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could only explain the truth to them. Afterwards, those barriers which prevented them from embracing faith are described, Allah declares. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearings, due to which they cannot interfaith. Therefore, they can neither learn any beneficial, nor can they hear anything beneficial. And on their eyes is a covering, which prevents them from seeing anything beneficial. These are the resources used to acquire knowledge and goodness, right or wrong, because how do, you, how do you acquire knowledge? One of the tools is your eyes and your ears. So all these things are very important. So he said Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing, due to which they cannot interfaith. Therefore, they can neither learn anything beneficial nor can they hear anything beneficial. And on their eyes is a covering which prevents them from seeing anything beneficial. These are the resources he uses he used to acquire knowledge and goodness. And for them, these resources have been cut off. So neither <coughs> can any hope be placed on them, nor can any good deed be expected from them. For them, the doors of fate have been closed because they denied the truth after it was revealed to them and adopted the behaviors of disbelief, disobedience, and enmity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً We will turn their hearts and their eyes away from guidance just as they refuse to believe in it in the first time, subhanAllah. <laughs> May Allah save us all from that. All the, this is in regards to the worldly punishment. The punishment of the hereafter is then described with the statement. So the, the punishment of this world is that they are deprived of khair. They cannot benefit from this Quran. They cannot benefit from their here. You cannot benefit from their sight. Nothing. That's the punishment of this world. So as far as the punishment of the hereafter is then described with the statement, theirs will be a great punishment. This is the punishment of hell. And of, Allah, of Allah's permanent anger. Afterwards, Allah speaks of the hypocrites who outwardly pose as Muslims while their heart are filled with disbelief. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the meaning of which, among the people are some who say we believe in Allah and the last day. While they do not believe. They think to deceive Allah and the disbelief and the believers. They think to deceive Allah and the believers. While they only deceive themselves and do not perceive it. And their heart is a disease. And Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to lie. <coughs> One must know that hypocrisy <coughs> is the term for outwardly expressing good while having malice inside one's heart. <laughs> so uh, the hypocrite, they are far worse, actually, than the original disbelievers. Because the original disbelievers, they don't hide it. They express their disbelief. But the hypocrite, billah, they hide uh, al-kufr in their heart and they manifest al-Islam. Like Abdullah ibn Saba, the one we spoke about uh, last night, Abdullah ibn Saba, the one who founded Shi'ism, uh, this Jew, he claimed uh, that he was a Muslim, but in reality he was a hypocrite. He was a hypocrite. Now, expressing good while having malice inside one's heart. Both hypocrisy of belief and the hypocrisy of action fall under its purview. Uh, purview. As for the hypocrisy of action, the Prophet ﷺ said, المنافق ثلاث إذا حدث كذب وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا تمن خان. The Prophet ﷺ said, there are three signs of, hip of a hypocrite. When he says something, he lies. So he lies. And when he makes a promise, he breaks it. And when he is entrusted with something, he takes from it. So this is a hypocrite of action. I mean, this one, it doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam, but it, he has the characteristic of the hypocrite. Because these are the characteristics of the hypocrite in terms of action. In terms of action. Another saying, وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ fajar, When he quarrels, he utters abusive language. This is another sign of a hypocrite. When he argues, he starts using profanity, use bad language and foul language, cursing and all that. Then there is a hypocrisy of belief. That, that one is the hypocrisy of action. That, uh, the scholars, they call that minor, minor hypocrisy. Minor hypocrisy. It doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam, but he's, he's called a munafiq because of his actions. But he's not a munafiq of belief. He's not a munafiq. He believes in Allah and all that, but his action contradicts his statement. His action contradicts his statement. So now the Sheikh is going to talk about the hypocrisy of belief that is mentioned here. And there is hypocrisy of belief which can expel a person from the bounds of Islam. So take him out of the fold of Islam. This is the hypocrisy that Allah described in this and other verses. So it means in this verse and other verses. Prior to and, the, and the right after the migration of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from Mecca to Medina, such absolute hypocrisy did not exist. Because there was no hypocrisy in Mecca, was there? Hypocrisy was in Medina. You see? طيب. It only came into existence after Allah gave triumph and dominance to his believers at the Battle of Badr, which caused those residents of Medina who had not yet embraced Islam to become severely disgraced. So a few of them began to outwardly pose as Muslims out of false fear and deception. They presented themselves as Muslims to the believers while in reality they were not. It was from Allah's supreme kindness and compassion towards the faithful that he clarified to them <clears throat> the tactics and the characteristic of these hypocrites so as not to become deceived by them and also upon the hypocrites themselves so that they may refrain from their various scandalous acts 
and evil deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَحْذَرُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ أَن تُنَزَّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ صُورَةٌ تُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا تُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ The hypocrites fear that a chapter may be revealed about them, exposing what is in their hearts. Allah described them as having the essence of true hypocrisy and decrees. Among the people are some who say, we believe in Allah and the last day, while they do not believe. Because they speak words from their mouths, which are absent from their hearts. Thus, Allah declares them as liars by saying, while they do not believe. Because true faith is that upon which both the heart and the tongue are unanimous. This verbal belief of the hypocrites is the purpose of trying to deceive Allah, which they can never do, and the faithful. Deceit encompass, encompasses whatever words a person speaks to the one whom he wishes to deceive, while having the opposite in his heart. Because he wishes to achieve his objective from the person whom he's trying to deceive. So the hypocrite adopted the same attitude towards Allah and the faithful, but the same deception returned upon them, meaning its bad effect came back to them, and this is among the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is because the tactics of the, of the deceivers are either successful and produce the desired result while they remain safe. Or the tactic produce neither positive nor negative result and they will remain safe. But in the case of the hypocrite, the deception rebounded upon them, bounced back on them. In other words, whatever plots and schemes they were employing on others were in fact being done for their own destruction, harm, and against their, 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 their scheme. This is because it is impossible that they could impart any harm on Allah or the faithful with their scheming. So even if they declare their concocted belief to the faithful, they cannot harm them. Their plotting and scheming became a noose around their own neck and they have been humiliated and exposed. They will have a continual sadness because the faithful have been granted triumph and might in the hereafter. Look, subhanAllah, the, the, the hypocrites, they live billah, in misery. They live in misery with the other Yeah. <coughs> so he said, and they have been humiliated and exposed. They will have a continual sad sadness because the faithful have become, have been granted triumph and might in the hereafter. They will be severely punished for this deceptive attitude, a fact which they do not even realize due to their stupidity and ignorance. Allah's statement, then their heart is a disease, point to their disease of doubt and suspicion and hypocrisy. Because the hypocrite, they have this suspicion in their heart. The heart can suffer from two types of ailments which cause a person to lose his health and balance. To lose his health and balance. Disease of doubt and disease of complacence. Thus, denial, hypocrisy, suspicion, and innovation all fall under the disease of doubt, while adultery and liking for such vulgarities and performing them all fall under the, the disease of the desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In case he who is sick at heart should be moved with concupiscence, what is meant by this, the desire for adultery, only 
those who are free from these two diseases can save themselves from evil deeds because they are blessed with surety and true faith. They obtain a shield of fortitude against evil deeds, adorning themselves with the noble attire of contentment. They move around with pride and dignity. Allah's statement regarding the hypocrites in their heart is a disease, and Allah has increased their disease. Describes his wisdom concerning the fate of the sinners because of their sin. This disease of hypocrisy is a result of their past sins, due to which Allah, in, Allah indulges them in more sins, which became which become a cause for their punishment. Allah says elsewhere, وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ We will turn their hearts and their eyes away from guidance as they refuse to believe in it in the first time. فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا عَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ So when they turned away, Allah turned their hearts away from the truth. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمْ رِجْسًا إِلَىٰ رِجْسِهِمْ So all these ayat are confirm uh, the other ayat that the Shaykh mentioned. But as for those whose heart are diseased, it only adds, weakness, uh, adds wickedness to their wickedness. So the true punishment of a sin is to become entrapped in the swamp of sin. Similar to the fact that among the rewards of piety is to obtain more opportunity to do good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ هُدًا وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ هُدًا Allah increases in guidance those who are guided. So, basically, when a person commits the sin, and he keeps commit, committing the sin over and over, then the sin leads to other sins. And it all starts very small. How many people, they started out smoking cigarette, and before you know it, they become, you know, gamblers, and then they start going into clubs, and all kinds of fitna, and one thing leads to the, to the, to the other, because the sin breeds another sin. But the good deed breeds good deeds. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, that Allah will increase those who are, who are guided uh, to more guidance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lead them to do more good deeds. He will lead them in the right direction. And like the sinners, because the sinners, when they commit the sin and they keep coming to, committing the sin, then their heart becomes hard. So the exhortation does not benefit them. Uh, so they don't benefit from the Quran. They don't benefit from the Hadith. They don't benefit from the sermons of Yom al Jumu'ah and the like. So basically, uh, they don't have anything in their heart that retains that knowledge. Nothing. Everything bounces off when he Billah. So nothing sticks in their heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us from that. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم